Greetings and welcome. I am Just Avore, bringing you what I hope is constructive information on what the system of white supremacy, racism, is and how it works, as well as what can be done to replace it with a system of justice. On May 19, 2023, we visited the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation in Omaha, Nebraska, and the birth site of the grandcestor Malcolm X to find constructive information about the impact his life and legacy have had on the effort to better understand the system of white supremacy and how to replace it with the system of justice. Our video entitled, The Origins of Omawali, A Malcolm X Story, covers a brief history of not only the grandcestor Malcolm X, but also the history of black classified people in Omaha, Nebraska, attempting to counter the system of white supremacy in their own interactions with those who classify themselves as white. I encourage you to watch that video if you have not done so already. I have posted a link in the description. At the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation, we were fortunate to nab a couple of interviews before the event was over. One was with Dr. Terry Crawford, a professor at the University of Nebraska, Omaha, who was also one of the guest speakers at that event. As this is a new format we're experimenting with for our videos, please bear with me as I am still learning how to better ask questions and uncover constructive information with the limited time we have with our guests. I am just a victim of racism. Here is our interview with Dr. Terry Crawford. For the record, can we have your name, please? Sure. My name is Dr. Terry Crawford. I teach at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, right here in Omaha. Okay. Um, and what, what would you consider your life work to be? Um, my life work really centers around uh, social justice, a liberation of my people, and dismantling the system that continues to oppress us. So on our channel, uh, the definition that we use for uh, racism, white supremacy, um, we use it interchangeably, we recognize that the words pretty much have the same definition. Mm -hmm. uh, the definition we use is a global system of people who classify themselves as white, who are dedicated to the mistreatment and subjugation of all those they classify as not white. Okay. Um, do you think such a system exists and is that definition the most accurate? Oh, I absolutely believe that the system exists. Uh, I have lived experience in it, just as I'm sure you do. Uh, we all do, any of us that have melanin in our skin, we live it every single day of our lives, and we know that it exists because you know it when you see it and you know it when you experience it. And absolutely, it needs to be dismantled, and we can dismantle it. That's why we're here today to talk about Malcolm and what he did and what the tenets that he represented were. He believed in self-actualization and in self-liberation for our people, and that we have to take it into our own hands, use our own resources, use our own assets that already exist in our communities, to liberate ourselves. We know that we are up against the system, but guess what? The system was built brick by brick, and we can dismantle it brick by brick. So I absolutely believe that we can do that, and we are doing it by, number one, what we've done here today, and then all of us that continues to operate in our purpose every single day to dismantle where we can, when we can, and collectively, we can dismantle the whole thing. What do you say are some of the um, the greatest obstacles non-white people, black people specifically, mm -hmm. have faced in our efforts to replace white supremacy with a system of justice? Okay. So what I believe to be some of the uh, biggest obstacles is access to information and knowledge. Because like I talked about today, there are several uh, pieces of federal legislation that allow brothers, in particular, I always talk about brothers, because we clearly out our communities of our fathers and our sons and our brothers as a result of this fake war on drugs, right? As a result of that system that was created, and Malcolm was very good at doing this, take their rules that they have created, learn exactly what that system is, and then flip exactly what that means and how it works for us. Malcolm was a master at it. Ernie Chambers was another person that was a master at taking their rules and using them to our advantage because we are intelligent, very high vibrating thinking people. If we use the rules that they intended to harm us, to liberate us, we can do that. That's one piece of it. The other piece of it is that we have to learn to operate as a collective. That does not mean everybody has to be of the same mindset. It does not mean that everybody has to operate in the same lane, because all of us have different lanes. But we also have to make sure that we do operate towards a common goal, and that common goal is our liberation. So 
would it be accurate to say um, with the lack of education and information that non-white people have about racism, um, it has led to great confusion about the system? Oh, absolutely. Uh, all of that was uh, intended to create chaos and confusion and keep people in the dark. But we've done what Malcolm epitomizes, and again, I always go to Ernie because he's our local person that has done this. We can educate ourselves. That's what we did with Freedom Schools and other schools that uh, Black Panthers and other black liberation organizations did. We have the knowledge. We have a blueprint as to exactly how we disseminate that knowledge. But it's up to us to take advantage of it. It's okay to send our kids to school, although Malcolm said we should never send our kids to schools uh, that were intended by the oppressor to dominate and indoctrinate, indoctrinate us. But guess what? We can do that, but we have to make sure when they come home that we deprogram their thinking and make sure that they are familiar with who they are, where we come from, our great inventors, and everything else that was created on this planet by black people, that we are the original people from the, uh, from the continent. We need to make sure our young people have all of this knowledge instilled in them. And then that way, when we send them out into a system that wasn't built for them, they already have the very strong foundation that will be resistant to all of that. I think about 80% of black children are enrolled in public schools. And what we see on the other end is about 65% graduate. That's just above half. But we also see that about 80% of the teachers are white, 70% being white females specifically. Uh, would you say that there is a, a, a correlation between um, the racial classification of those doing the teaching and how it impacts black children specifically? I would absolutely say yes to that question. There is definitely a correlation of the mindset of the individuals and the educational system that they receive their degrees in and how they devalue black lives compared to other lives and exactly what that narrative is that's being created as they're educated to get their certificates and their degrees to go into our schools to teach our children. That mindset of the educational piece or the hierarchy has to be changed if we continue to entertain those individuals teaching our children. Now, do we have to do that? Absolutely not. We could all homeschool our kids if we chose to do that. Not every uh, parent is equipped to do that, nor should every parent do that, although that's one option for us. What we can do, though, is instill again in young people, and maybe not so young, that it's important to go to campuses and universities that are not predominantly black universities, like we are here in Omaha, Nebraska, we have to make sure that we are kicking in those doors, being involved in those educational systems, bringing a different voice, changing the narrative, and then return to our communities to educate our children. Uh, one last question. Okay. One last question. Thank you for oh, you're your very thorough welcome. and open and honest answers. Um, so who would you say is the most confused about the system of racism and white supremacy? Would it be white people or non-white people? So, as I think about that question, um, confusion to me has an intent to it, or, or let me back up. Confusion means that you don't have the information, so you are steadily going to all other sources trying to resolve an issue. That's what confusion says to me. However, if you have operated in a system on these shores anyway, since 1619, with the knowledge of devaluing black bodies, then that's not confusion. All of that is intentional. So I would not give those that are non-melanated a pass to say that they are confused about the system that they operate in and that they benefit from. But what I will say is that we have gotten lost because of some of the systems that uh, we have been forced to operate in. We've lost our way. We've lost our, connective, our collective mindset. We've lost our history. So it was intentional that that was pulled from the curriculum or a lot of that information was not taking place in our schools. That was intentional on the part of the oppressor. However, when it led to conf confusion of black and brown people, that was also intentional. So I would say, that's my long answer to say, we are probably the most confused 
but we can always get back to a place of non-confusion by seeking the knowledge that's available to us. And I myself is one of those elders that had the responsibility to do that for generations that come behind me. We just need to continue to do that. It was done for me, and I have an obligation while operating my purpose to do the same thing for other generations that will also continue to perpetuate this for all of us. I would like to send a special thank you to Dr. Terry Crawford for her time and the constructive information she shared with us, as well as a thank you to everyone at the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation for allowing us to come in and conduct our business. I would also like to thank Gus T. Renegade at the Context of White Supremacy radio program, who has done excellent work over the last 13 years and thousands of programs, demonstrating the effectiveness of the code, especially when having conversations with victims of racism, as well as suspected and admitted racist white supremacists. I encourage you to listen to the Context of White Supremacy, or the COWS, radio programs for constructive information about the system of white supremacy, as well as the counter-racist code. Gus's efforts have inspired me to attempt to uncover constructive information by interacting with other people in my own efforts to replace white supremacy with a system of justice. Justice meaning balance between people, guaranteeing that no person is mistreated, and guaranteeing that the person who needs help the most gets the most constructive help. What are your thoughts on what you heard and or saw in this video? Feel free to leave your questions, comments, and concerns as well as a timestamp so we know which part of the video you are making reference to. For more information about the purpose and goals of this channel, as well as some basic definitions of words and terms we use in reference to our work, I have included a link below to a video containing this information. If you would like an even better understanding of the code and how it works, please visit ProduceJustice.com to order the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. There are many constructive suggestions for ending the system of white supremacy, and Mr. Fuller's code book and its word guide act as guides to getting and keeping on code. If you feel this content is constructive and worth your time and energy, please subscribe and share to support the making of more content in the future. Much appreciation for all the VORs already subscribed. I am just a VOR, and I am still learning. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Let me say something that gets to the very crux of the matter, and this may be offensive for some to hear who are not on the side that we're on. White people, we have been the problem for 400 yeah. years. Yeah. Say that again. Let me say it one more time for those of you who didn't hear me. White people, we have been the problem for 400 years. Yeah.